normal distribution. So I'm back on the at-risk ribbon. And if you go into distribution, I've already selected it for us, but notice that I'm getting the log norm two distribution as opposed to the straight log norm. I'm telling it, hardwiring it to be this because it's what it is in the linear regression fit space, there is an error term with a mean of zero. So that's zero is out of the fit space. This standard deviation is the standard error of the estimate. It's coming from cell D22. D22 is down here and it's that 0.0748 that I'd mentioned before. I need it out of the table of line ST regression results. That's using log norm two. It's much simpler than calculating separately what the log normals mean and variance would be back where it's a power curve. This is a much cleaner way of doing it. So once I've done that, you can see some statistical summary off to the side. Notice that the mean for this is a little bit above uh, a little bit above one. Think about what, if you can remember back to the slides, what I said we're going to do with this log normal error term. We're going to multiply it by the value coming out of my power curve. In other words, on average, I'm multiplying by a value a little bit above one, which said differently means on average, my point estimate is always less than average. And you're gonna to have to think about that one a bit to get your brain around it. This is actually a pretty good fit. In some real world cases I've done, I've seen as much as a 1.1 mean for about a 10% multiplier on average. So your point estimates coming out of the power curve in real world numbers can be as bad as right out of the gate 10% off. This is a toy classroom problem, so it's a, it's a small, uh, it's actually a much better fit than I've experienced in real life. But even now, your point estimate is less than the, the full, um, what the mean would get you to. So you see the statistical summary there. Say, okay, I've got that log normal in the cell now. The next cell down is gonna be my output cell. And all it is, is taking the point estimate coming out of the power curve or predicted man hours and multiplying it by the log norm. That's what you see up here in the function, F9 times F10. Okay. Now I've called that the output cell for the simulation. So the simulation is really just, just involves those three cells. This is my one input to it. That's my one output. I'm going to put the dice on up here and show you what happens now as I cycle a few times through F9, which is at risk's way of uh, showing you what an individual iteration would look like. Every time I hit F9, my estimate coming out of the power curve doesn't change. It's always going to be 50,075. What changes is my random sample from the log norm distribution. So sometimes, I'm multiplying by a number greater than one. Sometimes I'm multiplying by a number less than one. And you see the results showing up in the uh, kind of the pinkish color, rows maybe, F11. I've run this simulation already, and I know we're getting real close on the end of time. If Yeah, we're, we're right there. So let me show you what the simulation results were for a simulation, 5,000 iterations. And this is one particular uh, form of output report. It's called the it's called the compact in the in the at risk eight zero. It's called the compact report. Notice that our mean fifty thousand two fourteen, as opposed to over here, our point estimate was fifty thousand and seventy five. So we're already you're seeing a mean value already a little bit beyond. Uh, I made a calculation off to the side that some cost estimators like to see. This is individual. Um, estimate has a seven and a half percent CV coefficient of variation, which is simply the standard deviation divided by the mean. I found this kind of interesting that 50,075 got as low as 37,400, got as high as 65,300. Okay, that goes back to what, how large the standard.